Hello folks, I know it's been a while since uh, any video uh, from from me, but with school being a priority, I hope that everyone can understand that this is going to be more of, of a, a side project rather than um, my main goals. With that being said though, uh, I, I, I do hope that you can understand that, and if you don't, that's okay. This is the 1984 Soviet Union tornado outbreak of June 9th, 1984. Before I go into any details, this event is pretty poorly detailed. There are, there are some things about this. I found a paper about this, and that is really my only source for this video, unfortunately. Um, if this was a 1980s United States event that only had one source and did still have an F5 and an F4, I, I still might make a video about it, but definitely not an absolutely I would make a video on it, unlike this one. This one is a very prolific event, especially for the fact that it happened in Russia. So with all that out of the way, poor details aside, we still do have information. So we will get with that. A classic setup for uh, storm for storms and tornado genesis happened with a low that was in Poland and sorry Romania and Poland and then moved into Poland, Belarus, and Ukraine. This negatively tilted trough, just a trough that is um, that is more to the right when you look at it on a surface map. Uh, that's a very poor way of detailing negatively tilted, but to just know that negatively tilted tends to see more tornado genesis than anything else. Uh, dew points were also around 68 degrees Fahrenheit, with the air temperatures being around the high, the mid-high 70s. Uh, this is a pretty high dew point, so lots of moisture in the air. On top of this, Cape Convective Available Potential Energy was around the 1,500 to 2,000 joules per kilogram mark, which is ample energy for tornadoes. So we have our lift with our low pressure. We have our, uh, we have our uh, instability as well because of that lift. Lift creates instability uh, naturally, really. Uh, we have our moisture, and we have our shear also from our fronts as, from our fronts as well. So we're looking pretty good for tornado genesis, and that definitely occurred with an estimated eleven tornadoes, with two of those tornadoes being violent. That is a relatively higher percentage for the amount of tornadoes. Percentage of violence per uh, overall tornadoes, with at least seventy reported deaths and 800 injuries for this event happening around Moscow is also quite notable. Our storm tracks are here in the in the right in red lines and we have in the pink numbers I believe that is the time of radar imagery that was available in the uh, in the paper that I was able to find. However, um I will not be including that radar imagery, and that source will be in the description if you want to take a look at that. We also see our low pressure set up there at the bottom right. So with all of these ingredients in our tornadoes, what are our notables? Our first notable is the Golubkovo to Bolshu Sartovo F3. Apologies in advance for any possibly wrong names and also mispronounced names. Uh, these are Latinized, so they're from the Cyrillic or acrylic alphabet into... Shit, I'm so sorry. I just dropped my mic. Uh, English. And... Uh, sorry. Oh my goodness. And also, due to this Latinization, the names may also possibly be wrong in general. So... I don't know if they're wrong, I'm just going off of what uh, Wikipedia said the town names are. So, apologies about any of the, any errors. This F3 trekked 62 kilometers, caused three deaths, and causing an unknown amount of injuries. 
This tornado destroyed an estimated 30 homes, damaging 270 more, bringing a total to 300 structures affected. Every structure, including homes in Bolshoi Sartovo, had their roof completely blown away. This would make you to think that this town, this small, this smaller village, might just be abandoned. However, it was actually Malsoy Sartovo that was abandoned uh, after this tornado. That was an even smaller village. Our star of the show here is the south of Ivanovo to Luniovo F4. I only recently learned upon um, researching this outbreak that the essentially what is the European Weather Service uh, downgraded this tornado from F5 to F4 in, I believe it was 2019, which means that they have uh, they have information about this tornado that I couldn't find, which is upsetting to me, because I want to find the reason why. This thing definitely, in my opinion, caused F5 damage, as we'll see. So, I just want to know why, and I couldn't, so I'm sorry. We do actually have a picture of this tornado, as you, as you all can see, a quite menacing looking beast in black and white as tornadoes tend to do in black and white this tornado trekked a very impressive 160 kilometers reaching around 0.7 miles wide apologies for the constant change in measurement units there uh, we have at least 70 deaths confirmed from this tornado some sources that i did not use said around 80 to 90 even up to 100 deaths However, 70 is at least consistent across sources, as well as 130 people injured. There are, of course, conflicting reports on the continuity of this tornado. So whether that 160 kilometer path is indeed one tornado, if it's two, three even, generally the consensus is one or two, which of course doesn't help at all, because is it one or two? Of course, it can't be one and two, duh. But aside from our uh, problems there, trees were snapped only one meter or around three feet from their base. The base of a tree being where it, where it's at the ground, and then the tree starts. You know, the roots underneath the ground. You you, you get it. Uh, that is very powerful especially if these are hardwood trees hardwood trees are a lot a lot harder to break compared to softwood trees which as you can assume are going to be um, easier this tornado also lifted a 320,000 kilogram crane that's around 650,000 pounds three meters or around nine feet and then completely mangled the thing that is insane. I'm not a bodybuilder, but I don't think a bodybuilder can do that. Nor do I think that a strong man can throw a 50,000 kilogram water tank 200 meters. 50,000 kilograms is around, what, 104,000 pounds. That's insane. And this is just wind doing this. We, we, we think of 30 to 40 mile per hour gusts as strong, and this is you know, possibly up to five times, this is more than five times that number. That is crazy. We also know that pavement scouring was reported on a local highway, a reinforced concrete uh, building, reinforced concrete being a uh, concrete reinforced with steel rebar inside of it, was destroyed, this being reportedly a factory building. On top of this, hail from this storm reportedly weighed up to one kilogram, around 2.2, 2.3 pounds. This would, if that is true, I, I couldn't find any true confirmation, unfortunately. This, however, plenty of reports did say this. Uh, this would make this some of the heaviest hail ever recorded on planet Earth which is wild and should definitely show the power of this storm. Our last notable here is the coast drama to, to Louis-Bim Louis -Bim F4. This tornado pathed an also pretty impressive 30 kilometers. 
with causing an unknown amount of casualties or dollars in damage done. It is possible this tornado is a relative to our previous tornado with the with these names uh, Kostrama and Ivanovo being in a rel in a more or less straight line from each other especially going north northeast which is what tornado tracks tend to do so checks out granted just looks like it checks out so conspiracy level uh conspiracy level uh connections here i'm creating conspiracy theory of course uh, this f4 this is not conspiracy uh hurled many trees whether these trees were uprooted or snapped is unclear because i could not find information on that However, I did find that a 349,000-pound kilogram crane was toppled and mangled. That is around 700,000 pounds, which is very scary for just wind to be toppling and destroying. Just from this alone, I am going to say that this is possibly an F5. There is... Definitely evidence for high-end F4, and that would probably be the bare minimum I would rate this tornado as personally. However, I am not a structural engineer, I am not a civil engineer, I am not a tornadoologist, nor am I a damage surveyor. So my opinion does not matter here. The official rating is F4. So this event was... In my opinion, this event should definitely not be forgotten. It kind of is which is more or less fine this is a smaller event after all and not in the united states i'm in the united states so it you know makes sense however this event produced one of only three technically four f4s ever documented in russia the first one happening in 1844 then 1904 and then the one technically two in 1984 if we keep the Ivanovo's tornado as F5, this would be the one of this would be the three F4s, and this would also mean that this is Russia's only documented F5 to date. Uh, given tornadoes are annually around twice as rare in the EU as they are the United States, around 1,200 tornadoes in the US annually compared to 600. Uh, some, all of the United States may see tornadoes same as the, same as the European Union, and including Russia, yes. Uh, around Moscow is a relative plateau, though similar to the conditions geographically as the United, as the United States uh, Midwest. So this kind of checks out. This event happened more or less where it's at. But in any case, this event is also not only one of the worst tornadic events in Russia ever documented, but in the EU. This is because tornadoes are not as common in Europe. And I'm not saying that tornadoes are rare in Europe, by no means the same in the United States. Rather, it's just particularly for only around 11 confirmed tornadoes, for two of them to be violent is a relatively strong event compared to, yes, compared to the uh, the 2011 super outbreak. Don't get me wrong, that thing saw 15 violent tornadoes, but and all of them happening on one day, but overall 15 out of 360 is not that many compared to 2 out of 11. Um, there's that. The, the 2011 outbreak is still extremely powerful, though. I'm not denying that. Just that this event, with all of the factors involved, makes this thing more prolific, especially for the region. So with that being said, folks, I hope that you learned something I from this video. I know I certainly did while researching it. The, unfortunately, only one source that I have for this video will be in the description, and I will see you all in the next one. Thank you all so much for watching.